All right, so first thing that you are going to do is create a few background layers. So in my case, I've got four layers. On each of these background layers, these are just solid layers, I've dropped a gradient ramp effect. So you can see here, gradient ramp, if I turn this off, see it's a slightly different color, and so on. The next thing that we are gonna do, because uh, we can't see much going on right now, in order to create these rays, we need to use something called fractal noise to set that up. I've got three more solid layers, and on each of these layers, I've dropped an effect called fractal noise. So if I go over here and type in fractal and drop this fractal noise onto this effect, you will see nothing. Um, this is what a fractal noise looks like when you first open it up. But you can change all of these settings, for example, Turbulent Basic. So it's just um, changing these numbers will completely change the look of this fractal noise. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. This is my first fractal noise that I've got set up. Um, I've got Dynamic Twist, Noise Type is Linear. This is my Contrast and Brightness settings. This is my Scale, uh, Complexity of Nine. These are the sub settings and on the Evolution, and I've got this on all of my fractal layers, is this expression. If I play through, you can see this movement. This expression is just a really quick way to add movement. It's kind of a lazy way to add movement. If I go ahead and get rid of it and press play, you can see there's no movement on it. So to add this expression, on the evolution stopwatch, just hold down Alt. And when this little box pops up, you can just type in time times 100. and just click off and you'll see immediately we've got this uh, really quick movement going on. So that's fractal one and I believe I might have added this to my text to just give a little bit of swaying texture. Fractal two, uh, we are setting up the rays. So if I click on here, we've got some different settings on our fractal noise. This one is small bumps spline these are my contrast and brightness i've rotated it slightly you can see the edge here later on i'm going to mask that out sub settings complexity is slightly different and we've got an evolution as well and on the final fractal very similar it's just a slightly scaled down fractal width i think um, in here and also the opacity is down to 72. So once you've set up those fractals, the next thing that you want to do is create a text and pre-compose it. If you don't know how to do that, I'm sure you do, but you can just grab this text tool, type in whatever text you want, and you can just right click on this text and pre-compose and make sure to move all attributes and press OK. Now, the reason that we are doing this is that when we get to the very end of the composition, if you decide that you want to just change your text altogether, um, you can do that without destroying all of your effects. Okay, so that is why we are doing that. So here is my pre-composed text and I want to start adding effects to it. The first thing that I'm going to do is add a rough and edges. This is the numbers that I've got right here. Okay, and then if I press play, we've got no movement, so I'm going to add a wave warp. And this is just adding a slight wavy effect like we might see under the water. Then I added a gradient ramp, so a little bit of color. And next thing I'm going to add is a displacement map. So you just want to make sure that your displacement is set to source text one. And these are the numbers that I put into this. So if I jump over to our next one, got our source text one and we want to duplicate it. So now I have four versions of this. So if you don't know, you can just press Control D and that will duplicate your effect. So I will delete that right now. Um, and then we're gonna go through each of our layers. This is my first layer, my displacement settings. So on each of your layers, you just want to change your displacement settings slightly. Hopefully you should have something that looks like this. Also, just go ahead and on your first source text, change the opacity to 30. And I will tell you why you're doing that in a little while. Okay, so we've got our text. The next thing that we want to do is start adding our fractal noise effects to our text uh, to get this effect. So on my source text, I have added the fractal one 
track map to all of my text. If you cannot see this track map, just right click on here and in columns, just make sure that this modes has uh, got a little checkbox next to it. To change the track map, you just go in here and choose your layer that you want. And you just want to make sure that this is set to Luma Matte. So you can just click on this to change that. Background 4 is Fractal 3. Background 3 is Fractal 2. And once you have those set up, it should look something like this. The other thing that I've introduced in this layer is the masks on the fractal. So if I just switch this on right here, you can see, oh, I've just got to click this here. I've masked this out. So I'm going to go to None. And you can see that goes back to having an edge. So um, when you do your mask, just make sure that that is set to add and that will give us this little edge of our blue. So it's just not just cutting off or full rays down to the bottom. All right, so now you should have something that looks like this. When I got to this point, I was quite happy, but I really wanted it to look like these rays of light were actually affecting the text. So I'll just jump over to this one and you can see in this composition I've got some light on here. Now this is a very cool effect called light sweep. To get this effect I'm just going to turn a few of these off so I can show you. All right so this is light sweep one and you know what let me just go ahead and grab a whole new one out. So if you go to effects and presets and type in light sweep you will get this CC light sweep effect. So go ahead, drop this onto your source text and you can see this little line of light has just popped up. So if I drag this way higher, the sweep intensity, this is the light. If you drag these along, this is changing the center of the light. And if you drag this around, this is changing the direction. You can change this to smooth, linear, and it just changes how it looks slightly. You can change the width of the light um, the sweep intensity. So the sweep is this bit. You could drag this all the way down and bring up edge intensity. So it's just affecting the edges of the layer that it's on. So this kind of has to be on something. So if I just did a new solid and kind of copied that effect that I just did and put it on here, it's only going to be affecting the edge. So it's I mean, it might be useful in some cases. So if I delete that and go back here, you can also change the light color. I could do this or change it to, I don't know, red. I think in my case, I actually just went through and got one of these colors and did it that way. But then you can change, yeah, the intensity and so on. Obviously as well, you can keyframe this. In my case, for this layer, I dragged it along to the side, did a little keyframe, and then further down, I dragged it right to the other side, just like this. And so you can see down here, this is light sweep five. I press U to bring up all of our keyframes. And this is the keyframes that we just put in here. Uh, yeah, so that's how that got set up. Just gonna delete this for now. And then I just duplicated the light sweep effect and then just dragged the keyframes along slightly. And on each of these, if I go on, I go ahead and open these up, you can see that each of them is a slightly different color. They all start slightly after each other. So if I press play now, we've got these colors kind of flickering over it. It's not necessarily like realistic. I also didn't like, I mean, I really, I was very torn because I liked having really dark text, but I also didn't think that it worked very well. Um, I don't know if it was actually going to be a logo or something. So I thought this was a nice way to kind of highlight the text, but also have it in line with the background. I also wanted to have the edges lit up and I ended up putting that on to the second layer. And if you remember way back in the tutorial, I had you switch the first layer to 30% opacity and that was because um, I got to this point in my composition and this was actually much brighter and I didn't like it so bright. You might. This is what that looks like. Um, it's actually not too bad. I might not have it so low. Maybe I'll go 40%. However, I didn't want it that bright. So I lowered the opacity. However, I wanted the edge to be quite bright. But when I had this light sweep effect on the source text one, the edges weren't coming up so bright. So that's why I ended up putting the source text two light sweep here. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and put that back to 30. <laughs> okay, so let's jump over to our next composition. Next thing we are going to add is some bubbles. So this layer is called foam and that's because we are using the foam effect. 
I've actually never used this effect before and it's actually really cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and not ruin my foam effect that I it took. It, just, it took me a little while to set it up. So I'll just drag a new one on so I can show you how this works. This is what you're going to see when you drop foam onto your composition. You can just go in here and go straight to rendered and that's going to show you some rendered bubbles. If you go into the bubbles themselves, you can change all of these different settings. This is changing the size, lifespan, growth, strength. And if we go into rendering, you can actually change the look of the bubbles I mean the colors amber rock all of this blisters got some very strange ones and I believe I went with algae which al algae which would make sense and if you go into producer and you move these numbers up and down you're actually changing where all of the bubbles are coming out of so yeah it's pretty standard so if i switch my foam back on this is the settings that i did so basically i think i set the producer like way down here somewhere so that it really is just all floating up from like way down here in the composition these are my bubble settings 0.09 size variant 0.08, 300,000 life span, physics. I really don't think I changed too much at all. Maybe the velocity, uh, viscosity slightly. Once I had this done, I was pretty happy, but I did just want to add a few more things. So first I wanted to add a curves to just brighten the whole composition up, something like this. Again, you can find this in, a, in effects and presets. And it also just wasn't quite feeling enough to me, like it was under, underwater. I kind of wanted it to have a bit more like depth and swaying, I guess. So I just chucked a quick turbulent displace horizontal displacement and like an amount of 10. I didn't want that to be affected too much at all. And that is it. If you found this video helpful, give it a like will let me know that I am on the right track. And make sure to click this video because this is the one YouTube thinks that you should watch next. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.